Welcome back to another edition of Scripture Clarity here on Narrow Path Doctrine. My name is Jim. This time around, I want to take a look at one of the most taken out of context verses there really is out there. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Doesn't that sound great? Doesn't it sound like we could sing Kumbaya after that and everything's going to be fantastic? The only problem is, is that, uh, well, that's really not the way the Bible speaks of our lives in Christ. This verse, most people think it's a promise of a future with material prosperity and happiness, a life without any suffering or challenges. But you know what? The Bible actually says the complete opposite of that. In Philippians 1.29, it says, For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. So what does the verse actually mean? Well, it's included within a letter Jeremiah wrote to the Israelites being held captive in Babylon. The Israelites had been exiled from Judah because of their wickedness, their disobedience to God, and their idolatry. And you can read more about that in Jeremiah 21, as well as Jeremiah 25, 1-14. Through the letter, God informs them that their stay in Babylon is, well, it's going to be pretty long, about 70 years, in fact. So they had better settle in. He tells them to get married, to grow food, to have babies, to pray, and to live peaceably in the city that they now call home. God issued a command as well to disregard false prophets, along with his promise to visit and return them to their land in Judah. More of that in Jeremiah 29, verses 5 through 10. So in the first portion of verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Here God is assuring the exiles that their futures are not simply open to winds of chance. He hasn't forgotten them. He has already formed plans for their lives. It's because these plans are already made and what we know of God's nature that he is wholly committed to bringing about his will. The final portion of the verse is specific to his exiles and reveals his will for them. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So what does God mean by peace here? Well, some translations use the word prosper. It's not a great translation. The Hebrew word for peace or prosper is shalom, which translates to, well, peace. The kind of peace referred to here is being at peace with God, which will obviously pour over into daily life. God isn't promising a life without suffering or hardships, but one of hope and joy in him. God wants his people to be at peace with him rather than separated by evil, you know, sin. The remainder of the verse speaks of the truth of God fulfilling his promises specifically to those exiled in Babylon to give you an expected end. Despite their sin, God did not abandon his people. And so for us, well, we can rest our hope in God fulfilling his promises, of course. So Jeremiah 29, 11 isn't about us at all. It isn't about materialistic or a trouble-free life. It's about God fulfilling his promises, love for his people, and the mercy he gives to those who are his and follow him. And trusting the future God has written for us to have peace with God and rest all hope in him. I hope that brings some clarity to Jeremiah 29, 11. Join me next time, all right? Until then, remember, doctrine matters. God bless.